Hello everybody. I'm here just a little bit early tonight. I had a visitor that I was going to show you. Let's see if I can get her on camera. It's kind of hard to see. There she is. That's my little outdoor kitty. Her name is Clementine. And she lives under my house. Um, and she's very sweet and she just a second ago was up poking her head through my window because She's mad that I'm inside and not out there petting her, but I'll go out and pet her again in a little bit before bedtime So we'll hang out for just a minute and wait for people to join us. I see we've got one person With us. I can't tell who it is, but I'm glad that you're here. Hope that you've all been having a good day. I know I enjoyed sitting outside in the nice weather for a little while. It was a little bit cooler than it was yesterday, which I appreciate. I'm not a lover of the hot weather, so I always like it when we've got a less humid and a little bit cooler day. All right, let's see if it's time yet. Oh yes, it's 7.01. Oh, hi Ellie. Yeah, Clementine is very sweet. Um, I didn't really have a choice that she moved in, but she was injured when I found her, so I took her to the vet and got her all fixed up. But I've got three kitties inside, and I don't know that she would do well with them. It seems like she is more of a one-cat household kind of a kitty. So if you know anybody who needs a cat, let me know. She loves to be loved, so she would like to be an indoor cat, I think, but I just can't take her in myself. She gets fed though, so that's nice. Um, okay, so this evening I have picked out uh, a verse or several verses rather from Ecclesiastes chapter seven. And so we're gonna read Ecclesiastes seven verses five through 14. And I'm gonna fess up and admit that I am stealing this from um, my home church. They sent out a devotional today where one of our church members there read this passage and I thought that it was nice. So I'm gonna share it with you guys too. And tonight I am reading from my um, big red Bible that is the NRSV version. I just kind of liked this translation better than the message translation for this particular passage. So that's why I chose it. So I'll give everybody a couple more seconds. Hi, Susan. If you wanna join along in reading with me again, that is Ecclesiastes 7, verses 5 through 14. All right, let's read. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than to hear the song of fools. For like the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of fools. This also is vanity. Surely oppression makes the wise foolish and a bribe corrupts the heart. Better is the end of a thing than its beginning. The patient in spirit are better than the proud in spirit. Do not be quick to anger, for anger lodges in the bosom of fools. Do not say, why were the former days better than these? For it is not from wisdom that you ask this. Wisdom is as good as an inheritance, an advantage to those who see the sun. For the protection of wisdom is like the protection of money. And the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to the one who possesses it. Consider the work of God who can make straight what he has made crooked. In the day of prosperity, be joyful. And in the day of adversity, consider God has made the one as well as the other so that mortals may not find out anything that will come after them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So um, one of the verses that stood out to me when I read that was verse 10, which says, do not say, why were the former days better than these? For it is not from wisdom that you ask this. Um, and I think that that stood out to me because uh, it's easy to look back on the past and think, oh, those were the good old days. 
everything was great back then. Things are terrible now. Everything's crumbling around us. You know, it's easy to catastrophize what's happening in the world around us at any given moment and to romanticize what's happened in the past. But the truth is that good things and bad things happen all of the time. And this um, passage from Ecclesiastes reminds us that it's important to remember or to recognize rather the good things in the world around us at any given time. Um, so that's what I take away from today's passage. I was gonna show you Clementine came to visit again. Now she's like really up in the window. She wants to come inside. Here she is. I'm sorry, Clementine, you can't come inside. So um, that being said, I thought that maybe tonight we could reflect a little bit together on some of the good things that are happening in our lives right now. Um, I would love it if some of you would share in the comments something good that happened to you today or this week or that you're looking forward to in the coming weeks. Um, I've got a couple of things to share with you and somehow they all revolve around food. I guess that's just because of who I am as a person. Um, but today I finally made a sourdough starter. So it doesn't look particularly pretty, um, but I used whole wheat flour and just some water and I mixed it up with my hands because that's what you have to do to get some good bacteria in there and activate it and a little bit and then I'll start feeding it. So that's my sourdough starter. I'm very excited to start experimenting with the joys of baking sourdough items. And my other exciting thing that has happened this week is I ordered an air fryer and that came in the mail yesterday. And um, I've been very excited to start cooking with my air fryer and I made some prosciutto wrapped asparagus and I cooked some salmon and uh, today I made some sausage in there and a uh, low carb tortilla pizza. So I've been making all kinds of things in my air fryer and that is very exciting to me. So please, if you have something good that has happened to you, um, tell me in the comments what that is because I'd like to celebrate it with you. And finally this evening, um, I've got a poem that I would like to read, and this one is kind of about the cycles of life, and it's been one of my favorite poems from my She Walked in Beauty anthology for quite a while, and it's a little bit longer. You can see it's a little more of like a prose poem style, um, but I think it's really beautiful, and it just talks about the cycle of life and death. Um, and sort of the bonds of family. And I think that that's really beautiful. So this one is called The Dream That I Told My Mother-in-Law and it's by the poet Elizabeth Alexander. In the room almost filled with our bed, the small bedroom, the king-size bed high up and on casters so sometimes we would roll. In the room in the corner of the corner apartment on top of a hill so the bed would roll. We felt as if we might break off and drift, float, and become our own continent. When your mother first entered our apartment, she went straight to that room and libated our bed with water from your homeland. Soon she saw in my cheeks the fire and poppy stain, and soon thereafter on that bed came the boy. Then months, then the morning I cracked first one, then two, then three eggs in a white bowl, and all had double yolks. And your mother, now our mother, read the signs. Signs everywhere, signs rampant. A season of signs and a vial of white dirt brought across three continents to the enormous white bed that rolled and now held three and soon held four. Four on the bed, two boys, one man and me. Our mother reading all signs and blessing our bed. Blessing our bed filled with babies, blessing our bed through her frailty, blessing us in our bed, blessing us in our bed. She began to dream of childhood flowers, her long gone parents. I told her my dream in a waiting room. A photographer photographed women, said her portraits revealed their truest selves. She snapped my picture, 
peeled back the paper, and there was my son's face. My first son, myself. Mama loved that dream, so I told it again. And soon she crossed over to her parents, sisters, one son. War took that son. We destroy one another. And women came by twos and tens, wrapped in her same fine white, bearing huge pans of stew, round breads, homemade wines. And men came in suits with their ravaged faces, and together they cried and cried and cried and keened and cried, and the sound was a live hive swelling and growling. All the water in the world, all the salt, all the whales, and the sound grew too big for the building and finally lifted what needed to be lifted from the casket. And we quieted and watched it waft up and away like a feather, like ash. Daughter, she said when her journey began, you are a mother now and you have to take care of the world. So again, that was the dream that I told my mother-in-law by Elizabeth Alexander. And I just like it. That's why I read it tonight. I don't know that it has any particular application to what's happening in our world, um, aside from the fact that I think it's always relevant how families interact with one another and um, the cycles of life and death. So I hope that you enjoyed that too. And finally, we are going to close tonight with a brief prayer. So if you will, please join me. Loving God, you have upheld us with your love, even when we have not been aware of your presence. As we rest from our labors, let us sleep without fear of darkness or death and rise refreshed to begin a new day in humble service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. I'm glad that you enjoyed it, Ellie. Um, I've got lots and lots and lots of poetry around me. I keep finding that my stacks of books around my desk just keep growing by the day, which is a good thing because most of the time they just sit there on the shelves and gather dust and I'm finally uh, getting back into them again. That's been nice. So I thank you guys for joining me. Um, Again, if you have something good that has happened to you lately or that you have done to just kind of bring a little more positivity into your lives, I would love to hear about that. She's calling me. She must have forgotten that I was doing my live video tonight. Um, yeah, I would just love to hear what's happening in your lives and what's keeping you positive and upbeat and focused on the good things that God is doing for us. So thank you again for joining me. I hope that you have a lovely evening and um, we will have another video for you on Friday. I think it might look a little different this week, so I'll let that be a surprise to you. But if you don't see my face, don't worry, everything's fine. Um, Pastor Bill and I are just putting together a little bit of a different spin on our evening videos. So have a good one and we will see you later. Bye-bye.